Welcome to the Ask Ezra Intimacy Coaching Podcast, a peek behind the curtain of some of the most intimate conversations that people have with Ezra as an intimacy coach. Join us for a session already in progress. So Karma, tell me, how do you identify? I am a she, her <laughs> in that aspect. And um, the title I uh, had, my title, I go, I'm a wife and a mother of two. And I am also a sex slave of a, another man who's my, mas- my master. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this context, I, I identify as sex slave because that's the title I I would really want to, that's the title I really wanted to be with this guy. So <laughs> yeah. with my master. So, so that's how I go by. Yeah. I appreciate that. And then, and then also you said, you know, this is, this is the title that you wanted. So I want to highlight yeah. that. Um, so you, you identify as a sex slave and you're, you have full agency in your ability to make that choice and you're not being coerced into that experience or at all. Is that no. correct? It's not the bad kind of sex slave. It's more like the, um, I, I can understand this word has a lot of connotations, but the, but uh, it's not, there's nothing non-consensual or forced or unhappy or undesired or, or any sort of negative connotation for me in, in, that, in that role. I chose it. That's how I was like, how about I be this? Yeah. That's wonderful. I appreciate I appreciate the the explanation just for people who may not have any experience with that. Because just like just like it has that dark connotation to it, it has also a very like just you know, hot and fun connotation to it, right? Mm-hmm. Like those uh like those slaves girls you see hanging from their ankles in comicses and they're like, "Oh no, please don't do that stuff to me." <laughs> mm-hmm. You know those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So there's a fun side to it. Yeah. Well, tell me, yeah. Tell me what's appealing about it. What's fun about it? It's appealing about it. It is, it's extremely liberating, right? It's like an adventure in a theme park almost because uh, it's real, right? But it feels within the container of sex life, like within that part, it feels so safe. It feels like, like a ride in a theme park, right? You know, it's safe. You feel yourself going up, going down, falling, crashing, rotating, uh, slamming against the wall, but you know (laughs) somebody's uh, got you, got your back, and that you're being uh, just taken on an adventure for fun. (laughs) I like your analogy, except for um, that you can they can have like half a dozen people die on a roller coaster before they (laughs) don't ruin roller coasters for me. I would hate to be number five. It just means I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I know the statistics are true, and still I will take a roller coaster ride anytime, except the cyclone, because that is the cyclone is a 200-year roller coaster in New York that I don't know about it, but <laughs> everything else I'll take, right? Even though I know casualties happen. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, there are risks. There are certainly risks. And that's exactly how I feel about sex slave, right? Casualties happen, but <laughs> I mean, not actual casualties. Sure. Well, I mean, I would actually say sometimes people do die doing BDSM things, but I think it's far fewer than roller coasters. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> and I bet you they're having more fun. <laughs> Certainly BDSM is safer than taking the stairs or driving. Definitely driving while taking stairs. Okay. Sorry. No more jokes. For me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or eating or eating sandwiches with toothpicks. <laughs> 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 okay, well, we're getting distracted. So um, I'd love to hear about what your experiences are in terms of like, what are your interpersonal challenges, perhaps with your, um, with your slave master, or, or your, um, your partner in marriage, or you know, any other kind of relationships that you're experiencing? What are the things that come up that are, that are challenging, um, either current or previous? Well, I'd say the challenges at the moment are more kind of like in a way between me and myself, right? Because in a way, I feel like uh, uh, in this journey of master slave, we conquered a lot of a lot of challenges, right? Both 
me and my master and me and my husband and, and me and myself, there's, you know, we wrote a book about it. We published a book. We're running with that. We're talking about it. We're, we're doing things that I never, I am doing things that I never thought I would be doing. And like, I'm looking at it as if like I'm standing on the top of the mountain and saying like, or on the top of a hill <laughs> and saying like, okay, I'm, I, I reached the top. I'm here. I did it. Now, where do I go? And mostly now that this connection to my master has borne fruit and sort of proven itself, who am I when I'm not being a sex slave? Well, who am I except sex slave? You know, I, I know who sex slave is. I'm starting to be like, so when I leave here and go home and become my own person again and, and am not... I'm not somebody's somebody's like echo, you know, somebody's slave. Who am I? So that's that's kind of like where I'm at. And it's kind of like a, it, it, the question goes kind of deep. Sure. Yeah. And how does how does it feel to be exploring that question? I'd say it's both scary and validating and, and very kind of tender. It's scary because, um, well, there's there's something so incredibly enjoyable and safe and relieving to be able to just put it on another person, you know, just to say like, okay, this roller coaster ride is safe because you're here, right? And so I can go about and enjoy life and just, and now I'm saying like, okay, but maybe 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 I want to have that confidence within me. Maybe I want to be like, it's safe because I'm here, because it's my ride. Because when you're not watching because you're busy, I'm not scared because I know I can take care of myself. Or, you know, because master slave, it's so easy to just let somebody else take care of, right? But it's not ultimately what I want to be doing. <laughs> yeah. So describe. Describe for me what it is you would ultimately like to be doing. Uh, thank you so much for these questions. It's so <laughs> good to have the platform to talk about it. Um, what I would want to be doing. I would want to be, I, I always wanted to be like Joshua, right? I wanted to be like him. So I, I look up at him. It's like, wow, you're such a rock star. You, you got so much agency, so much pulling stuff you want towards you. Like you just, life is kind of magical around you. I want my life to be like that too, but I don't want it to be his energy. I wanted to, to find a way to make it my energy, you know? Cause he's got his own, I'm not cut out of the rock star material. I, I'm something different. And, and I'm something quieter, you know, and I'm something more less about other people. <laughs> yeah, maybe not a, not a rock star, but a jazz star. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I just want to play. I just, I play an instrument, right? When I, when I, yeah. when I played it, I, uh, all I wanted was to be like, let, join people and, and jam, you know? Uh, so maybe kind of, that's kind of like what I want, to be able to jam on my own tune, Am I explaining myself even remotely clearly? Yeah, no, I think so. Yeah, well, I think I think that um, the master slave dynamic can be one of reliance, and you really rely on the master. And I think that there is you can operate in that space, and then when not in the presence of the master, you can have you can be at a deficit. You can like not be able to rely on yourself, but you can also alternatively be relying on yourself and be fiercely independent. And then you can still act, be reliant on that master, but it's not, it's not about need. It's about want. Mm -hmm. I like and that. And it's almost more powerful when you can choose. Yeah. When you can choose and you, because it's not about survival, 
and it isn't right you're not you're not depending on your master for survival but it can feel that way it can but remember in the beginning of the podcast you were talking about adhd right that's kind of like what, where i feel i want to it taught me so much the stuff we did together about my own agency i really feel like i need to go into anything i could go into cross any kind of to get that feeling of like I can count on myself like I count on you. Because you know what? Why I know that? Because you count on me. He, if he trusts me, if he counts in me, if, if, and I don't disappoint him, and I don't, then I should be able to count on myself because I, I can do it, <laughs> right? If I can do it for my master, I can do it for me, right? So I, I want to reach that, that, that focus, that... Uh, level of service, right? And then come to him and say, look, look at what I built in your name. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That sounds wonderful. And I love the word agency, right? Um, and I think it's so, it's so important to appreciate the level of agency that you have and to be mindful of that, in, in, especially in these power exchange relationships because you don't give up agency, right? You give up agency in an abusive relationship, you, but in a, in a power exchange relationship that is healthy, you're not really giving up agency. Like you still have the choice of whether you're making a choice or not. Right, and it, it, as to me, it seems, that's exactly right. And to me, it seems that as we go, the more, agency I can take the more it frees up our dynamic to deal with stuff we really want to go to yeah right it's kind of like okay you know you don't have to worry about me tying my shoelaces I got it <laughs> and like I'm going to come to you when I need help you can be sure of that I'm going to ask you exactly what I need for but you won't have to worry about the upkeep all the time yeah you know that girl's got it yeah absolutely <laughs> it's an aspiration it's not all there yet Sure. Well, and it's and it's not a binary. It's not like all or nothing. There's degrees to it. And I think um, one way of thinking about it that is really banal, one way of thinking about it that really is like applicable to everybody is that they feel like people often have arguments about like, where are we going to go eat? And the way I think of power exchange is that together we agree who's going to make that choice. One of the best things about a power exchange is like, one of the things I, I, I wanted from a power exchange and was like, you know what would be fun? To not have to choose any kind of movies or restaurants. You do this. <laughs> Nail on the head, right? I'm like, yeah. All yours. <laughs> I think agency describes how much influence you have over who gets to make that choice. Like as a slave, you get to say, you can choose where we eat. As a slave, you can say, you get to choose who chooses, right? And so the master can say, okay, you're my slave and it's your job to decide where we go to eat. Mm -hmm. Yes, he could, that's exactly it. Right, but then as a slave, you can say, I'm not comfortable with that I don't assertion. Do that. Uh, there's a there's a line. There's a line. Um, yeah. I like the master slave dynamic. I like it too much. There is a lot of freedom, the ultimate freedom, in saying like, it's not you decide unless when, or it's not you decide uh, until it reaches this point where I'm not comfortable with it, and then I'm gonna. It's. It may sound, it may be not completely understandable at first second, but I like the give it all. I, I like the blanket permission. I like the, um, you're the master. So I just don't, it's not that I don't question. It's not that he, I don't have to argue because he respects my position. So if I'm not comfortable with something, he sees it and he leans in. And I trust him enough to know that I don't have to put these issues in a contract or in some kind of like 
personal game that we play with each other where I'm like, oh, you can do anything to me, but not that. I'm not comfortable with that. But rather that to know that he will not harm me. And that's it. Yeah. Well, I, and I, and I appreciate that that is your choice. And I, just for the sake of listeners, I want to make the point that you get to choose which choices you make <laughs> Absolutely. and which choices you defer to the master. Consent is primary and it's, it's obvious. Nothing goes without it. It's not a, this is a journey we're both participating in for, for both our self-development. We're, we're doing things we want to do because we trust the other person and know that he will not abuse our trust and we can do whatever we want to do with each other, even if it's like, I'm giving you my life and you are giving me your word and, and we're running with it because that's the kind of life I want to live. Yeah, absolutely. But the, the irony is not lost on me that as a slave, you may have more agency than someone who has supposedly a 50-50 relationship where the the power exchange is really not discussed and is not mindful that so-called vanilla relationship oh yeah right where oh yeah the... you're arg constantly arguing about who's choosing who what you know who's going to make that choice for dinner right <laughs> yeah uh, well this one they don't all work as as well as the other <laughs> Yeah. The thing the thing that I love about the power dynamic is both the permission and the obligation to be completely honest. So you don't put any energy into falsifying yourself or justifying yourself or protecting yourself or uh or just setting up any kind of boundaries to make yourself more safe in the communication. Yeah. It's honesty and interpersonal integrity are sort of like you must do this you can only do this if you have permission to do this <laughs> sort of like yeah so in that way it kind of shines the way to it's true about the marriage but it seeps into the marriage as well sure yeah so this may not be an easy question to answer but what is i maintain the the right to not okay yeah, absolutely continue. yeah you have agency here <laughs> <laughs> not forcing you let the record show that you're not being forced <laughs> to answer any questions so what is the best part of this dynamic and what is the most challenging part of this dynamic oh, all right that's not a hard ball <laughs> um oh, the, the best part of this dynamic is how you can throw almost any life challenge at it related or unrelated to the dynamic itself and it will become a tool in solving that or in approaching that or in motivating yourself to that and that is also i would say the challenge because it becomes the tool <laughs> for everything and sometimes it's like if i do not if, if it's not my master asking me to do this and it has nothing to do with my dynamic. It gets done way more slowly, <laughs> right? And I wanna be in control of all, well, not in control of all aspects of my life, but to feel like, to feel the same kind of safety I feel as a slave in myself without trash. Would you like private intimacy coaching? Perhaps you'd like to be a guest on our show. Either way, book your free 30 minute intro call with Ezra at askezra.info. So what I'm hearing from you is that your master slave dynamic is such a tremendous resource of confidence and agency that it perhaps shines a light on places where that confidence and agency is missing in the other parts of your life. And the challenge is how do you, how do you manifest that, that same power? in ways that have nothing to do with your master. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. I think that's a very illuminate, illuminating way to put it. I didn't see it exactly like that. But yes, uh, it's just, uh, uh, I mean, there's sex thrown in, right? There's constant adventure. There's so much. It's kind of like uh, being uh, Batman and Bruce Wayne, right? Batman has the movies about Batman. <laughs> Bruce Wayne goes home and does boring shit. But, but the movie's about Batman. So 
how do I bring uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman to be the same person again and, and have the same joy and interest in life? Because one life feels like a chore list and the other one feels like a roller coaster. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So how do you show up with the same joy and integrity and power for the chore list as you do for the roller coaster? Right. How can I get more roller coaster with my chore list? <laughs> how can I bring more of that joy into marriage and motherhood? <laughs> I just picture you like literally on a roller coaster, like filling your Instacart to like <laughs> grocery shopping while on the roller coaster. <laughs> How about this? I'll be in a shopping cart rolling down. The... <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to grab the items like next to <laughs> next to the roller coaster. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to pry a bit here and sort of ask the question again. And what interpersonal conflicts with your master have you experienced or are you currently experiencing? What are like points of friction? Points of friction. Uh, I'll have to work on that because I do very well in, uh, you know, I don't, I know my job. <laughs> I don't present points of friction. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I try not to friction too much. Mm -hmm. What would I say are points of friction? Uh, maybe that, maybe, maybe I should trust him more and let him, it just feels like we have so little time together and so much work and so much uh, to carry in that little window of time that we have together that um, I don't want to deal with friction and conflict and, and solving stuff. I just want to be with him. And so maybe, maybe the, the lack of friction is the friction, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So perhaps there are things that are being avoided because you just want to be doing the fun stuff. And there are things that are maybe not so fun that they don't feel important. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, we, I don't treat this relationship like my marriage, you know, it's, it's a different kind of contract. It's sort of like, I don't know, maybe the letting go and following should not fall into the you know, it's sort of like the relationship settings, you know what I mean? And how a relationship manages itself, sort of like maybe it should be more like what we do and not how we do it or what I do and not how I do it. But I do not want to manage this relationship at all. I like it that it's being managed and that my job is to go with him wherever he goes. It, it comes back to the same thing. Uh, I don't know what my points of conflict would be <laughs> i don't know yeah do you think that there's ever i can tell you what the issues are They're sure not exactly yeah like um i get he has uh he's polyamorous you know and uh obviously and he has uh uh other many i mean he has other people who are in dynamics with him which i love which are my families and my family and my friends, but that is hard. It's hard whenever he, he finds, whenever, whenever there's somebody new on the horizon, that is hard. That is hard because, uh, yeah, even though the way it's the way the system is, it's that gets me <laughs> kind of in the chest and, I, and it shouldn't. And we talk about it. I mean, forget shouldn't. It, it is what it is, but we talk about it. Yeah. He has, you know, this is something I agreed with and understand and respect. You know, I, I just have like a kind of fiery heart. <laughs> so yeah, every now and then it catches fire <laughs> around that topic. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, thank you for being vulnerable. And it's so understandable that you know, we're all raised to be monogamous, right? And so becoming polyamorous is, is a process. Right. And I, I love the question, how do you not get jealous? Because it's just the wrong question. Of course, there's jealousy. Of course, there's these challenging emotions, but we manage them and we don't let them stop us. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of it, though. I, I mean, that's not 
it. Another thing that is challenging for me is that, um, you know, he he will be, he will eventually move somewhere else. And I hope it's going to be close. And I've asked for it to be close, but I don't know if it's going to be close. So that's, there's always that fear, you know? And every time the topic of conversation comes up, it's like, oh, am I going to have to lose this? <laughs> yeah. So how do you manage that jealousy or or whatever the feeling that comes up or how do you manage the fear that's not jealousy that that's not jealousy that's like you know getting ready for somebody to maybe move and yeah leave. yeah well so i mean that's that's a preemptive break that that's a breakup brewing <laughs> that's a it's not a breakup because but it's a it's a um you know storm <laughs> so if you if you break your heart a thousand times in anticipation, maybe it won't hurt so much. Oh, don't be a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a whole thing to say. Okay, fine. You do, don't do it in anticipation. Listen, it just happens. It happens. Your mind goes, I know what you're saying. I, I know all about the law of attraction, man. <laughs> I don't want to bring that into my life either. I, I work a lot not to. Yeah. But when I let go of the, you know, when I let go of the reins, especially like, you know, let's most of my time walking in the, op in the opposite direction of fear. But you and I are talking, right? And you said, be vulnerable. So this is it. This is it, the vulnerable. Yes, yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, no, and I don't. And I don't mean to, to make a problem where there isn't one. I think what I'm trying to tease out is it, it sounds like it's a really successful relationship. And it also is not a relationship that a lot of people have a model for. Yeah. Like a lot of people never met a slave. A lot of people never met somebody polyamorous. Right. And so one of the things I'm trying to do is to say, okay, here's this challenging experience and you're clearly managing it. So what are the strategies that you use to manage it? Right. So I understand. Yeah. So clearly seeing seeing your partner with somebody new experiencing that new relationship energy can be challenging so how is it that you manage that challenge trust yeah trust i go to him i tell him i'm afraid you're going to replace me with another woman she's prettier than me i don't like that mm -hmm. i don't know if i can take that mm -hmm. i don't want to i wish this wasn't happening i tell him everything yeah I tell him i i give him my whole truth right yeah. And then I trust him to do whatever he can do for me. And uh, if, it, you know, if he's like, this happened for real, not long ago, you know, I told him everything and he said, okay, I understand and I accept that and I need you to get over that shit <laughs> because it's that part of my life will not change. And I don't want to see you in pain all the time. Yeah. So get over it for you. I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's like, I'm not, there was no ultimatum. There was no hidden threat in that. It wasn't like get over it or find the door or anything. It was like, get over it. Cause I don't want to see you suffering. It's not going to change, but you're just hurting yourself. Right. So yeah. when he tells me that I trust him and also, and he says, you know, he says, he gives me his side of a different man that he'll always be there for me and that he'll never replace me with anybody because you can't do that because I'm asleep. Yeah. That's enough to deal with. That's enough for jealousy. That actually feels like, thank you. You answered my need. And you also gave me a little bit extra. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear you. It's really nice to be able to do that. Sort of understand that the other person on the other side is strong enough, won't let you down in the principles of the dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. He'll do whatever he can for me. And whatever he can't, he's going to tell me what he can't do and how I should deal with it. And I'm going to do it because he's good for his word. Yeah. Okay. Let's switch gears a little bit. Um, I'd love to hear how, you know, good, bad, and different, how the master-slave dynamic has affected your marriage and your sort of station in, in that experience. Oh, it intersected with my marriage in many different ways throughout this period. There were times where it built it in a way. There were times where it brought it down. 
it's always a challenge to the marriage. It's always a challenge. But sometimes there are times where all the efforts unite under the same sort of conceptual umbrella, as in what I'm doing with my kids and what I'm doing with my husband and what I'm doing with my master and what I'm doing with my work, work under the same, they're, they're just moving in the same direction. It's, it's all towards a grander purpose, right? And then they really feed each other. I can see stuff I say around Joshua, I, I do with my husband and I see the benefits and I can make it work with, with everybody, with my kids, with my parents, with my husband. With, and sometimes it's exactly not that. Sometimes it's exactly the opposite. And then it's sort of like the dynamic and the marriage are like in conflict difficult together yeah they don't complement each other they they i wouldn't say detract from each other at this point because i don't i don't think the master slave relationship is taking away from the marriage something something the marriage needs that is often what the way people think about it and that would be sort of like the common conception but I don't think it's drawing nutrients away from the marriage. What I think is that marriage, we have a communication problem at home. We need to talk more. And I feel like that's kind of what the dynamic gives to the marriage. And the conflict is, is more like, can, I, can Bruce Wayne have as interesting and involved and passionate a life as Batman. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that in way is the dynamic of the master slave relationship shines a light on the marriage and maybe exposes some things that, that could be happening in a different way. Should be, must be. We're, we're working. I work on it all the time. I yeah. work on it all the time. It's just super hard. Yeah. Cause, um, not everybody wants to do this. Uh, well, I hope, uh, my hope is that I will find a way to be myself to my full extent in both places because that's kind of what is called for. Really to bring, bring myself, not just be taken, but like take whoever needs taking must be taken. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so it's a, uh, it's sometimes a sore issue, but it's also a very big hope that it will all be on one, that it's not far away, that it'll all be on one keel and I'll be the same person here and, and enjoy life to, to the same extent in both places. Yeah. And show up with the same, with the same integrity or the same enthusiasm. Yeah. Cause I love both of them. I love both of them dearly. There's no two people that I respect more than my husband and my master. And uh, I wish my husband knew how high a regard I hold. Yeah, perhaps he'll find out. Perhaps he'll figure it out. It's not too late, right? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Not at all. We're, yeah. we're, we're together. We're together and we're pretty happy together. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. It's interesting because a lot of the times when I find a guest for the show, it's that person is mired in conflict. The person is in the swamp. And so it's an interesting contrast to be having a conversation with somebody who is on the mountaintop. Oh, yeah, it's nice. I've, I've been in the swamp too. I'm very happy to be on the mountaintop. You get to pick better questions when you're on. You get to, I'm looking from above and choosing my path rather than drowning through it. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there. The view is definitely better. When you're in the swamp, all you can see is the swamp. Yeah. So it is It is more a conversation of what is working and sharing insights with others who may be, you know, having some challenges that are similar to the ones that you're, that you're handling quite well. Thank you. I'd say trust. Trust is number one. And, and well, trust is number two, too, because trust, you got to kind of got to be okay with stuff and not. Like I remember in the beginning, I was so afraid of crashing and burning. And I was like this the whole time. Like I was suffering, man. <laughs> I was terrified. Yeah. I was, uh, 
I was like, everything's going to go up in flames and nothing did. And I learned to look at stuff as sort of like, a, I've been through a lot. Um, I'm not that scared of, <laughs> you know, crossing the street without a hand anymore or that something terrible will happen. It's so what I'm saying, number two is trust in just a good world. Yeah. Is that a cliche? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. No, I like it. It's like number one is trust. Number two is see number one. <laughs> number one, trust your master. Number two, trust God. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. The ultimate master. <laughs> yep. Well, that's wonderful. Um, do you want to talk about your book? Oh, wow. After all this, the book. Yeah. Um, so the book is called Surviving Master Joshua, the BDSM Memoir of an Unfaithful Wife, which I was. And I'm not anymore, and I'm still married, just so everybody gets that. You can find it on, basically, just Google it. Uh, Surviving Master Joshua, the BDSM Memoir of an Unfaithful Wife by Karma Said. And you will find it on Amazon and on Google Play and on Barnes and & Nobles and basically everywhere they sell books online. And uh, you also can go to survivingmasterjoshua.com. That's the website. And that's how you find the book. And uh, Carnal Culture Publishing is for anybody who has written something in the realm of kink, erotica, and a nonfiction book. I only want nonfictions, no vampires. Uh, and uh, um, seeking help without judgment. Sure. And that is that your company, the Carnal Culture? Yeah. Yeah, Fantastic. Carnal Culture Publishing. Yeah. Fantastic. And maybe I should talk to you. I want to I want to put the mind fucking book out in a second edition in a way that's more approachable. Uh, I'd love to talk about that. I'd love to, to, to see what, what can be sure how it can help. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Yeah. First off, I need to take fuck out of the title. <laughs> I wondered how you live with that. I wonder they 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 go so hard against books that use those words. Well, you know I self they... I self publish. That's how. And I I mean we're doing really well. I just sold this thousandth book. So wow, I'm I'm dancing. Amazing. I'm dancing happy success dance. Yay! <laughs> a thousand. Okay, you tell me. You tell yeah. me. I'm behind. We'll talk. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ahead of you because I started it sooner, right? When did you publish? Uh April 2022. Yeah. So I'm almost Just a, April. Basically. Yeah. 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 I'm a year ahead of you because I published in May of 2021. Well, you still, thank you. I would love to hear your advice. You're, you're ahead of me. <laughs> sure. Sure. Well, you know, we'll see. We'll see who's ahead in a year. You have to check in with me next, <laughs> next April, and then we'll see how far it, it is. Like I tell my kids, it's not a competition. We're just playing for fun. <laughs> exactly. I don't keep scores. I yeah. Keep no, scores. and you don't have to lose for me to win. I want you to win too. Oh, yes. No, I would love to. I'd love to pick your brain on that. It's it's uh, like, how do you keep going for that long? <laughs> like just pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah. It's a lot well, of work. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> I don't want to reveal my secrets. <laughs> oh, okay. We're still recording. I forgot. Okay. Yeah. Well, and thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it for sharing your your perspective and your experience and, and being vulnerable here with us today. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, Karma. Thank you for allowing it. It's really, it feels really good to be able to talk freely. Thanks for watching the Ask Ezra Intimacy Coaching Podcast. Support our show at patreon.com slash askezra. Join us at the personal growth tier and receive a special thank you on the next podcast episode. A very special thank you to both Sarah Nash and Deb Matson for being Patreon supporters at the personal growth tier and helping make the Ask Ezra Intimacy Coaching podcast possible.